I'm looking at section three one. Super easy. Super easy. Super easy. Um, today we will do section oh, uh, three two. Excuse me, section three two. And then tomorrow we will do section three three. Then we will review. Then quiz um, on Friday. Oh, wait a second. A quiz on Friday. I'm gonna do M and M's on Monday. I do three four. Uh, you guys believe that it's screwing me up? Oh, thanks. Um, I don't know. I'll have to look at it. Have you been? Maybe I'll do the M and M project. Maybe get it. Maybe do it on your own. What'd you say? The answer is fifty three point three. Yeah, it's hiding. That was the last one. All right, any questions on the homework? This is when we get into the fun stuff. I really like chapter three. I got questions from chapter I like chapter three because I'm a, I'm a card player. Mm -hmm. You're a gambler. What's that? You're a gambler. See, I, I don't consider like I mean, it's gambling, yes, yeah. but like I feel like there's less chance and more uh, strategy. Like poker. it's more strategy. Poker, lots of strategy. Poker. Right, like I, I, I would. It just, I, I could not be able to play. I, I would not be able to play a slot machine. Yeah, that is all random. That is all chance. You know, there's no skill to that. But you know, like a poker, t I, I would love to play poker. Well, even blackjack, because I feel like there's tons of strategy. I feel like it raises the stakes. We have money. Yeah. Just like That's yeah. Hey, you have a different answer than the book. Oh, I do. I'm Where? 39. I wondered about that. What is? What's the question? Well, Could the book say 45? Yeah, it was like 45. Because that's what I had. I had 45. Because right? it's five instead of four on the last one. That's at least what I did. Count zero as an even. I did five too. Oh, so we're supposed to count zero as an even number? I think. I uh, we, you know, we had a very long discussion about this last semester. Because that is saying, this answer is saying that zero is not even. Right? This answer is saying zero. I, I don't consider zero an even number. Like, oh, zero, is zero is neither it's even nor odd. Zero. It's nothing. Zero is just there. Let's see what Google says. Google will probably tell you that it's even. Really? Yeah. Well, because if you define any number to be uh, a number that is divisible by two, then it comes out a whole. Well, then zero would be an even. But if you divide, if you say zero or any even number, like do you consider negatives even? I do. Yeah. Do you, yeah. Negative, negative even numbers. If you consider negative number, like negative two, negative four, even, then you would have to then say zero would be even. But I don't know. I, I, I get my way around that. <laughs> You'll see on tests and quizzes and stuff, you, that never becomes an issue. So, yeah, I think um, if you had if you had said that zero was even, that would be a five there. So what would it be, 4,500? Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's get to today's notes. Conditional probability and the multiplication rule. So today what we're going to be talking about is, um, okay, what is the probability that I pull a 10 out of a deck um, given that I have removed all of the clubs. Yeah. Uh, what is the probability of something happening given that something else has already taken place? Okay. Now, and we're going to talk about two different things. We're going to talk about, okay, if those things affect each other or if those things do not affect each other, if those things are what are called independent or dependent events, that changes how we calculate that mathematically. All right, and what I'm talking about here is conditional probability. Conditional probability. Conditional probability is the probability of an event occurring given that another event has already occurred. 
It's the probability of A happening given that B has already happened. Or uh, I could flip that around when that's what the wording has here. The conditional probability of event B occurring given that A has already taken place, given that A has already occurred, is denoted by P in parentheses. And whenever you see P parentheses, that is the probability of that thing happening. And you're going to see me use that notation a lot. You know, probability of um, drawing a king. You would see me say P parentheses K. Probability of drawing a king. Probability of flipping a heads. P and H. Probability of rolling a 1. P, 1. So this is the probability of B given A. And that's how we read that. Probability of B given A. The probability of B happening given that A has already occurred. That notation there, that, that vertical line, is the is like given that. That's where we read that, given. The probability of B given A. The probability of B occurring given that A has already occurred. And again, there's going to be different rules that we'll have to apply based on our knowledge of how B and A interact with each other. Do they affect each other? Because if they do affect each other, we have to calculate that a little differently. If they don't affect each other, well, then we can calculate that a little differently. We have to know based on the context of our situation. And again, this is called conditional probability. There is, there is a condition that has happened. There's something that has happened, and now we are finding the probability of something else happening. Not just one singular thing happening. Suppose that you were drawing cards from a standard 52 card deck. What is the probability of the second card being a 10? Now, I am not sequencing these together yet. All I am saying, I'm not saying what's the probability of a 10 than a 10. No, that is not what I'm saying. I am saying what is the probability of a second card being a 10? Just the second card. I'm just looking at the probability of the second card being a 10. If the first card is chosen was a 10 and it is not placed back into the deck. And, and the key here is replacement. Replacement. That is going to be a key to a lot of these conditional probability problems. You know, we're going to have, you know, marbles drawn from a bag. We're going to have M&Ms drawn out of a cup. Um, and is it replaced or is it not replaced is going to be a big issue that we're going to have to deal with. All right. So what is the probability of the second card being a 10? Well, remember, any probability is the number of successful outcomes divided by the total sample space. So how many successful outcomes do I still have in the deck? Three. three, right? I have three successful outcomes. How many cards are in the deck? 51 now, right? So the probability of a 10 being drawn after a 10 has been drawn is 3 out of 51. And that's how we would write that, the probability of 10 given a 10. The probability of a 10 being drawn after a 10 has already been drawn, and it is not placed back into the deck. Right. And that issue of replacement is going to come up, come back again and again. So you have to think about it conditionally. They have already taken something out. Now we're, now we're basing our probability off of that. Um, we're going to have conditional tables as well. Uh, this, weirdly enough, shows up on the algebra and geometry state tests nowadays. Weird. I have no idea why. That's so stupid. Um, I forget what we call these um, contingency tables. That's what they're called in our curriculum, contingency tables. Uh, the table shows the results of a survey in which 2,276 social media users were asked whether they have been offended by something they saw on social media. To find the probability that the user is male, given that the user was offended by something on social media. Right? So basically what I'm asking you to find was based on the... Now, is this theoretical or statistical? Statistical. statistical, right? I have done this study, and I'm looking back on this study and saying, okay, what is the probability based on this information? It would be very hard to do theoretical on this, right? This is theoretical. Right. This was theoretical, the 10 given 10. 
So this is more statistical. The table shows 2,276 social media users. What is the probability uh, that the user is a male? Probability of male, given that the prob uh, given that the user was offended. This is what we are trying to find, right? Probability of male given that they were offended. Okay. How many males were offended? 532. Five, 532, right? Male offended. 532. That's the total successes. Now be careful. What is my sample space? 1,751. Yeah, 1,151, not 2,276. Because I have to say, given that they were offended, how many total people were offended? 1,151, right? That's my probability of male given offended. I like to think of it this way. When I'm using these contingency tables, that that way I set up my conditional conditional probability notation is kind of like your fraction, right? This is males given offended. This is top, bottom. This is male given offended. So if I would say, okay, what's the probability that if, um, if I'm only looking at females, what's the probability that they did not get offended? 549 out of 1168. That is the probability of uh, no given female, right? That is probably no given that they had they were a female. I could then even go so far as to say, okay, what's the probability that if I chose a person at random here that they were a female who were offended? 619 out of 2,276. So it's all based on the wording. You know, I could give you a table like this and ask you all different types of probabilities, which that comes on our next quiz. I'll be giving you tables like this and asking you the probabilities based off of that. You just have to figure out, okay, am I asking something conditionally or am I asking just straight up probability? If I say something like, what's the probability of the person not being offended given that they were a male? What would that be? Probability of them not being offended given that they were a male. What would that be? Uh, given male, 1108, 1108, 1108, 576 out of 1108. That makes sense? So you yeah, figure out, okay, am I working with conditional or am I just working with probability? All right. Two events are independent if the occurrence of one event does not affect the occurrence, uh, the occurrence of the other event. Okay, so think about this. Um, if I flip a coin and I roll the dice, roll the die, those two events, dependent or independent, they are independent because they have no, I mean, like, that's just silly to think that they have some sort of effect on the other. Now, if I flip a coin and then I flip another coin, are those events independent or dependent? Independent. A lot of people who don't really understand mathematics would say, Oh, well, I bet it's going to come out this way. You know, I bet it's got a better chance of being a heads now because it was, came out as a heads before or a tail. No, they have no effect on one another. The probability is always 50%. One event does not affect the other event. That is independent. Now, we can say these statements are true mathematically if the events are independent. The probability of B given A is the same as the probability of B. What does that mean? That means that A is not affecting the probability of B. If I make the condition that A has occurred and it comes out as the same probability, then you know those events are independent. Like if I say, what's the probability of flipping a heads? 50%. Well, what's the probability of flipping your heads given that I've rolled a one? Still 50%, right? The probability of B is the same thing as the probability of B given that an A has occurred. And I can flip that around as well. The probability of A given the B is the same as the probability of, uh, of A. The probability of me rolling a one is the same thing as the probability of me rolling a one after I flip the coin. Right? Those events are independent from one another. And if they're not independent, you would call them dependent. 
So suppose you're drawing cards from a standard 52 card deck. What is the probability of the second card being a 10 if the first card is chosen was a 10 and it is placed back? You notice how now I am replacing? The first one I was not replacing. And now I am replacing. So what's the probability of me drawing that 10 on the second try? How many 10s are there? Four out of? You said two out of 26. Which is also? Oh. oh. <laughs> it goes even further. So yeah, one thirteenth. Because these two events are independent now, right? Drawing the 10 and then drawing the 10 again, because I was I chose to replace it, are now independent from one another. Were they independent from one another on the very beginning problem that I had, not placed back? These are dependent events because one is affecting the outcome of the other because I do not replace. But if I replace, one does not affect the outcome of the other. That's the idea of being, them being independent versus dependent, okay? Uh, rolling a die, then flipping a coin. I think we just talked about that. Those are independent. Smoking three packs a day and getting lung cancer. I hope we would say that that is dependent. What is affecting the outcome of the other, right? You know, think about it this way. Um, is the probability of um, uh, lung cancer given that three packs a day, the same as the probability of getting lung cancer. No, right? Those probabilities are not the same. This probability is way higher. Given that you've smoked three packs a day, the, the probability of getting lung cancer is higher than just a random person picked getting lung cancer, right? Uh, spoiler alert, yes. <laughs> Uh, putting 10 different colored beads in a bag, choosing one, replacing it, and then choosing another. Independent or dependent? Independent, right? That's all about the idea of replacing it or not replacing it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is start sequencing events together. Now that we know about conditional probability, because we need conditional probability to use this. Use the multiplication rule. The probability that two events, A and B, will occur in sequence is the probability of, and, and that's how the, the notation, the probability of A and B occurring. And again, I said yesterday, the words and and or are very important in probability. Be very careful with your words. The probability of A and B occurring. The probability of rolling a three and flipping a heads happening in sequence is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given A. The probability of A times the conditional probability of B given A. Now, here's the interesting thing. Let's take that example that I just talked through. The probability of flipping a heads after me rolling a one. Well, or the probability of me flipping a, flipping a heads and rolling a one, excuse me. The probability of flipping a heads. What's the probability of flipping a heads? 50%. 50%, right? One out of two. What's the probability of me rolling a one? One sixth. One sixth. Is that probability conditional on me flipping the head? No, because they were independent events, right? So really, the probability of B given A, if the events are independent, can just be summarized by the probability of B, right? If those are independent from one another. If you know independence, then you can say that the probability of two things happening in sequence are just the probabilities multiplied together. Probability of me flipping a, uh, flipping a coin and rolling a number, you should multiply those two things together. 
One half times one sixth, one twelfth. You want to get a one and a head? It's one twelfth. Because those events are independent from one another. You want to draw a ten, replace it, then draw a ten. You want, you want two tens in sequence? That's four out of fifty-two times four out of fifty-two. Right? However, if you choose not to replace it, if you make those dependent, you have to take the conditional probability of the second thing happening. Which means, that, and I have to consider the probability changing from the second draw, right? Probably the first thing happened, okay, what's the probability of me drawing a 10? 4 out of 52. What's the probability of, and then I, I, I keep it. And what's the probability of the second 10? 3 out of 51. And then you multiply those together. That's the probability of drawing a 10 then a 10. Okay. So let's take a look. You find the probability of drawing a red card, replacing it, and drawing a black card. What is this telling you? Those are independent events, right? So then I know that the probability of drawing a red and a black is equivalent to the probability of red times the probability of black. Because I know that these events are independent from one another, right? They do not have any effect on one another. So what's the probability of red? It's the probability of black. So the probability of drawing a red than a black is one fourth. That's crazy. Now, please don't mistake this for saying the probability of drawing a black card, right? What is the probability of just drawing the black card on the second draw? One half, right? That's the probability of one half. I am looking at the total sequence of events of drawing the red then the black. That's a one half times one half, which is a total of one fourth. Probability of drawing a red card, not replacing it, then drawing a black card. Okay, independent or dependent now? Dependent events, which means that the probability of red and black is the probability of red times the probability of black, given that red has already occurred. Because I have dependence now, because one event is affecting the other event, I now have to take the conditional probability. Well, the probability of red is still the same. But what is the probability of black now? How many black cards still in the deck? 26. How many total cards in the deck? 51. You see that? So now this turns into a little bit more difficult of a math problem. This is uh, 26 out of uh, 102, right? 1351st? Yeah, that'll reduce to that because I can cross simplify. Right? 1351st. Okay. That makes sense? That's how replacement changes things. If I choose not to replace it, I have to consider the conditional probability. If I choose to replace it, then I can say that those events are independent, and I don't have to worry about that. Find the probability of flipping a tail, rolling a five, and pulling a multiple of four out of a hat of, of the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. What do you know about all three of those events? They're independent. They're independent from one another. So I can say that the probability of tail and five and multiple of four, multiple of four, is equivalent to probability of tail times probability of five times probability of multiple of four. <coughs> so, what's the probability of tail? What's the probability of five? What's the probability of getting a multiple of four? Two out of nine. nine. Two out of nine. Because we don't include zero. We leave out two out of ten. Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. So one out of 54. Yeah. Questions about that? Okay. So can we chain multiple things together? Yeah especially if those events are independent from one another, right? 
if there if there's a dependence, those events don't affect each other. Yeah, just keep multiplying them all together. If those events are dependent, well, then that changes things. I have to consider conditional probability. And then, you know, if if I were to truly look at this and I wasn't sure about dependence, well, then this would then turn into the probability of tail times the probability of tail given, oh, sorry, excuse me, five, five given tail times the probability of multiple of four given that five and tail has occurred. Does that make sense? Which, which can get a little icky. Then you get real deep in the weeds and it's really hard to tell what's what. It's nice when things are independent from one another. If you have five pairs of black socks, four pairs of white socks, what is the probability that you choose randomly a pair of black, a black pair today and a white pair tomorrow? Dependent or independent? Assuming that you're not going to wear dirty socks on the second day. Dependent. Dependent. So that means if I want to know the probability of black and the probability of white. That means that I need to calculate that by saying the probability of black times the probability of white, given that black has already occurred. Right. So what's the probability of black? Five nights. What's the probability of white, given that black has already occurred? Four out of eight, which is one half, right? So I can say five eighteenths. Is that is the probability of both of those things happening in sequence of one another? Does that make sense? Okay, let's take a look at another one of these contingency tables. Consider the following data. Uh, and let me make this table here. Say this was a grade. Break down. Consider the following data are being a male and receiving an A, independent or dependent events. And we are going to mathematically show this. And we're going to show this mathematically. Now, if these are independent, if, the, if these two events are independent of one another, being a male and receiving an A, if they are truly independent of one another, what should the probability of male be equal to? Uh, no numbers. If these events were truly independent from one another, what should the probability of male be equal to? What are my two events? Probability of receiving an A. Male and A, right? If being a male and receiving an A were truly independent, then the probability of male would be equivalent to the probability of male given that an A has already occurred. Right? This is the mathematical equivalent to showing independence. Right? What's the other way I could have shown this? I could have shown this by saying the probability of A if these two events are independent from one another, the probability of A happening should be the same even if I choose a male. Even if I say given that it was a male. Either of these two statements would show independence. So let's see if these are independent or not. Okay? Let's see if this, this equality exists. What's the probability of a male? Well, I guess i got to figure out some sums, don't I? Um, this is 20, this is 32, 42, 59, I believe. Oh, that was quick, so let me check that. Uh, this is 28, this is 11 and 11. 28 and 22 make 50. So 109? I believe it. I believe it, I stood in my head. I, I, 20, I 32, 42, 52, 59. 42 plus 70. 59, right? Yeah. And then uh, maybe let's go this way. This is 26, That's what I was 39, 52, oh wait, 42, 50, yeah, okay, good. So this is 27, this is 19, this is 25, this is 20, and this is 
All right, so what's the probability? Let's just check the first one. What's the probability of male? 59 out of 109. What's the probability of male given A? Probability of male given A. 12 out of 47. Are those two statements equivalent? 59 out of 109 gives me 5, 4. 12 out of 27 gives me 0.44. So what can I say about those two events? They are dependent events. They are dependent events. Okay? Because these are not equal, and you could check the other one too, this implies that these events are dependent events. Okay. That's the mathematical proof of it, right? given the contingency table. You have to show that the probability of male is not the same if I choose a grade first. Okay. That would show, you know, showing that they are equivalent would show that they are independent because it would. Choosing the grade first wouldn't have any out, wouldn't have any difference on choosing male or female. All right, let's take a look at the last one here. Probably that Mr. Laverick will successfully dunk the basketball on any given try is 0.04. I'd say that must be less than that. Very close to zero. Probably that Mr. Laverick will successfully dunk a basketball on any given attempt is 0.04. Find the probability of me missing three straight dunk attempts. Now, Here's the deal. Does my second event get affected by my first event? No. So what can I say about these three ha things happening in sequence? They are independent, right? So what's the probability of me missing my first dunk? Missing. 96. Yeah. What's the probability of me missing the second dunk? What's the probability of me missing the third dunk? So the probability of me missing all three Oops, I missed my six. I did. Which is 0 .88 0 .885 That's the probability of me missing three straight dunk attempts. <coughs> okay, what's the probability of me making three straight dunk attempts? Now, is that truly the case? Because could I make one, miss one, make one? That is a possibility, right? So the complement, it is not the complement of my top, right? It's different because this is me making, this is me missing three string. This is me making three string. There are variations. So 0.04. Come on, buddy. To the third power would be a very small number. Point, okay, four zeros in front. Uh, point one, two, three, four, six, point four, six, four. That's not a bad. <laughs> yeah. Point oh oh six percent, you know. I mean, making three straight dunks. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty low. Now, the tricky one here is the last one. That shouldn't have been too bad. But the tricky one here is the last one. What's the probability of me making at least one out of three? What's the probability of me making at least one out of three dunk attempts? Now, what is this the complement of? What is this the complement of? Because I can do this by finding a complement. What event is me make is me making at least one? 
like in words, not no numbers yet. What's the problem in me? What's the what's the opposite of me making at least one? Missing two. Missing all. Does that make sense? Think about <laughs> think about it in terms of the context. Because if you can define a complement, it might be easier, right? It might be easier to calculate the probability. Okay, so what is my event that I want? Making at least one, right? Making something. What's the opposite of me making just one? Missing all. Missing all. You see that? That is the complement of me making at least one. How do I how do I calculate the complement? One minus that thing. So I can say that the probability of me making one is equivalent to the probability one minus the complement of that thing. So one minus the probability of me missing all. Make sense? Yeah. Think about the opposite event occurring. Think about the complement of that event. Well, what is the probability of me missing all of them? 0.885. So 1 minus 0.885, which is what Luke thought this last one was going to be. No, no, no need to apologize. That is actually the probability of me making it. Why is that bigger than the probability of me making a dunk? Because I have three tries. Yeah? That's why the probability is raised. Because I have three tries to do so. <coughs> okay. All right. Here is the homework for the lesson.